What's up guys? It's your boy Scott the King Queen Cichlids bringing you yet another new video. Today we're going to talk about how to make your own local club. Now before we get started, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. Hit that notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video or go on live and hit that thumbs up if you enjoy this content or hit the thumbs down if you didn't enjoy it but leave me a comment below so I know what I can do to improve your experience on King Queen Cichlids. Now with that said, let's get started with our show. Now as many of you know, I created the Cichlid Club of York about eight years ago. November 2011 is when I created it. So let's go over why I created it so you get a better understanding of that. Now I had been introduced to a local club. What you should know about my area, the Northeast area, from Virginia all the way up to New Jersey, Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, it's a, a plethora of large local clubs. Well, I should say it's a large community of fish clubs. It really is. Probably the largest in the country. So I started attending a local club in the Lancaster area. Uh, that was about all fish, not just cichlids, all fish. Uh, I was with that club for about two years. I was even on the board. I did articles for the newsletter. I was pretty active. Uh, I did a lot of networking, met a lot of speakers. At some point during my tenure at this club in Lancaster, I came up with some ideas. Obviously, I love big cichlids. I've loved them since I started this hobby many, many moons ago and I had some ideas that I brought to the board. Unfortunately, those ideas uh, fell on deaf ears is the best way I can put it, and they didn't want to try them. So I had the idea and I had some backing some, from some other friends who thought they were great ideas to take it in my own backyard and start my own club and, and try those ideas there. And that's exactly what I did, and that's when the Cichlid Club of York was born. So now that you know how and why I created a club, let's talk about the steps to where it is now, which is one of the most formidable clubs in the country, only after eight years of existence. So, uh, number one, once I had my inspiration to start a club, I needed a name. So it was pretty simple. I'm in the Cichlids. I was living in York, Pennsylvania. The Cichlid Club of York, Pennsylvania was born. I then purchased that domain name and I created a website. So, make a name, I create a website, I would suggest you create a website and I'll tell you why. You're going to need the backing uh, and the support of outside companies such as Seacrest Farms, uh, Dr. Tim's Aquatics, uh, any outside industry, Zoomed, Aquion, and you're going to look much more professional if you have your own website. If you have your own website, People are going to think that you're professional and that your club's doing well and they're going to look at you much differently than if you just have nothing to really show of what you're asking for help and products. The reason why you're going to these companies for help is because many times they will send you donations to help fund some of the things you're trying to do. They know by making a club you're going to be introducing them into products that they sell so they try and should try to help you get your club up because they know at some point it's going to pay dividends for them or that's at least how you should explain it when you talk to the various representatives in the industry that's how I do it. so create a name create a website the other thing that I'm very good at is social networking uh, social media I should say uh, you know I was very fluent with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram I was on those forums I knew how to promote stuff I knew how to get uh, a lot of people looking and clicking and getting interest I knew how to do that uh, that was not something that most local fish clubs use uh, that was something that I jumped on I noticed early it wasn't being used properly and so I took advantage of it and I promoted over all social media and even at the time I was promoting on Craigslist which was particularly successful at that time as well 
Craigslist isn't anywhere near as relevant as it was eight years ago, but it was certainly a medium I used to promote the hobby, or promote my club. So, got a name, you got the domain name, you're, you're promoting on social network. I then created my own page on Facebook because Facebook was the number one forum out there uh, where people were gathering and meeting and speaking. I mean, Facebook is still huge today. So I created my own page. Uh, I made it smartly. I made it where people could make their own posts, interact, and get excited. And that really took off. That that Facebook page, along with our website, really took off. So that was great. So I really had some momentum going. I had people excited about the website. The next thing you need to do, logo. You have to have a great logo to go along with your club. Things are visual. Whether you realize it or not, visual stuff is important. Whether it's your logo for a club or your thumbnail on a YouTube video, how it visually looks and if it's appealing plays a large measure in your success. So I ran a contest asking people to create a logo for the Sickle Club of York and I paid that individual who had the best one, the one that I picked, I paid them $50. That's right. I got the logo that's been I've had for eight years. I only paid fifty dollars for it. So you have now you have a name, you have a website, you have social media covered, you now have a logo to promote. So what's next? What's next is you need to make sure that you have an audience that wants to participate and actually meet up every month. Uh, when I first started, I didn't know if it was going to be monthly. I said it was. I was going to wait and see how the first meeting went. So now you need to start a date. You, you need to put a date out there and say, hey, would you guys be interested in meeting on a monthly basis, talking yeah. to fish, and having a club meeting? Based on that response, and I got an overwhelming response that people wanted to come, I then had to go to our next project, which was find a place to meet at. Now, finding a place to meet at can be very, very difficult. So I'm going to take you to a location that kind of embodies what you should be looking for and the things you should be asking for when you get a place. This is basically what you need to have a club meeting. This is the type of uh, setup you need. You need a flat screen TV so that your speaker can do a presentation or you can run videos or do whatever sort of presentation you want to do. Uh, you need obviously places to put the computers and stuff on, shelving, and then you need a wide uh, arrangement of chairs. I would suggest that you should expect anywhere from 20 to 40 uh, attendees coming to your first meeting the first year. So that's some things that you don't think about when you're renting the place is that you're going to need chairs, you're going to need something uh, to show off the presentation such as a flat screen TV or some sort of projection screen or something like that you can use. Uh, tables, chairs. You want to have a bathroom so that people have access to the bathroom whenever they need to go. If you can make it handy capable uh, ready, that would be great. Uh, that way everyone can be involved in it. But this is just a look at the bare necessities, quite honestly, of what you need to run a successful fish club. Chairs, tables, flat screen uh, TV for presentations, and or a projector and, pro and projection screen. Um, and then I always have backup, like I have an extra TV, extra supplies, extra wires, stuff like that. Alright guys, and we are back. So, finding a place to have your club meeting is very important. It, and I, as I said before, I had already in my mind set a budget of $200 a month. So I knew that I could rent the 
local clubhouse that was near to me uh, and still comfortably pay for the rest of the expenses that I would need to pay for to have a successful meeting. If you don't have a budget, if you don't have the funds to do that, again, there are clubs out there, there are churches out there, and there are libraries, and maybe if possibly some fire halls that will allow you to use it to use an area for an hour or two free of charge. But you have to look around, you have to ask, uh, you might have to barter in, in, in exchange for that, give them something else, whether it's service or volunteer work. But there are ways you can get a, a spot or an area where you can run these club meetings. All right, so you now have a name, you have a website, you have social media covered, you have a logo, you've got people interested in coming, you now have your place. Let's talk about the structure of a meeting. Meetings work like this. Let's say you start at, the meeting starts at 1 o'clock. Normally you open doors at 12.30. People come in, start networking for about a half an hour, seeing, you know, talking to various people, seeing what's possibly going to be at, on the, in the auction, and we'll talk about the auction real soon. Uh, and then at 1 o'clock, normally you have a speaker that comes in, does a presentation. It's quite a, a daunting task. Uh, but you'll see if you keep looking at the priority list, it will be updated regularly. Um, of course, my Lake Victoria, my precious Lake Victoria cichlids. Uh, for about an hour, and then after that, there's a little more networking for about 15 to 20 minutes where you have refreshments. So, and then after that, the auction takes place. <laughs> Five hours, five hours, and then we have five hours, and five here, six, five over six, six in the back, seven here, break, eight in the back, over nine, nine, ten, twelve. And that's the basic, basically that's the end of the club until the following month. Alright guys, believe it or not, we are at the 12 minute mark of this video, and I've just barely scraped, scratched the surface of what we're getting ready to get into. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this information thus far. I'm going to make this a three or four part series because it's going to take a while to get all the pertinent information out to you guys so you know how to create successfully your own local fish club. And again, I haven't even touched the service. We haven't talked about becoming a non-exempt, uh, non-profit organization. We haven't talked about uh, all the key people that helped me get the club to where it is today. I certainly did not do this all on my own and I certainly want to recognize some of those key people who helped me get the club to where it's at today. Uh, we got to talk about food, we got to talk about how you can get speakers to come to your club, uh, we got to talk about how we can grow your club, getting donations, uh, just there's so many things that we have to touch upon that 13, 12, 13 minutes is not going to do it. So we'll try to just make this a three or four part video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments, please leave them below. I am just 15 subscribers away from 1900, so if you are not subscribed to my channel, please consider doing that. Also hit the notification bell and hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today. Now on Sunday, 8 o'clock, it is Sunday Live with King and Queen Cichlids. It's going to be a Caribbean theme. We've been having a lot of fun. We're getting more and more people coming to our live feeds, and I call it kind of like the aquatic underground where we have a lot of smaller channels come and we all talk and we, we share information. If you are a subscriber, please come. If you are a smaller fish channel, please come. Or a big fish channel, it doesn't matter. Come join the family, join the fun. Let's talk. Uh, it's always a great time Sunday at 8 o'clock. Alright guys, I really appreciate you showing up, joining in on the video. You didn't have to come view us, but you did on this particular day at this particular time, and it means a lot to me. We appreciate each and every one of our subscribers, and we hope we will see you on Sunday and then again on next week. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.